that dominant uh, historical figures controlled history, close to what I thought that was wrong, and they thought there are forces. They, they may, may be chance-related forces, but there are forces beyond our control. Uh, one could also think that a Durkheimian view would suggest that the warfare may have some kind of unnecessary function. It's a second view of warfare. Uh, that, neither of these are Clausewitz's view of warfare. Clausewitz, uh, of course, as we understand, has this notion that uh, warfare is the uh, consequence of rational policy or decision making, that uh, war is uh, politics by another means. And, uh, but Rene Girard's view is not any one of these three views. It seems to me that what's, what's interesting, and in what we're going to be in talking in coming uh, sure months and years about what Girard's view is, but it seems to me as a kind of preliminary of what this is, I don't think Girard has any, is really sharing any of those three perspectives. His perspective is a fourth perspective. Um, his perspective, uh, quite simply, is that there's a kind of inner law that takes over once we make a rational decision to go with violence. And I'm just going to give you, uh, we, we haven't really done this here, um, but it seems to me that what you have here find in the, in the uh, where the class was found. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to give you a couple of, of, uh, of quotes from, from Klauswitz. I'm reading uh, from the Klauswitz text on page 101. War, therefore, is an act of violence intended to compel our, opposite, our opponent to fulfill our will. Uh, violence arms itself with the intervention of art and science in order to contend against violence. So violence is against violence. Uh, violence, he says, uh, at one point, is a duel. He speaks about, um, as we've, we've seen already when uh, Jean-Pierre spoke, that the utmost use of force. Anthropo uh, sorry, philanthropists may easily imagine there's a skillful method of disarming and overcoming an enemy without causing great bloodshed. This is the proper tendency. However, plausible this may appear, it's still an error which must be extirpated. For such dangerous things as war, errors proceed from spirit thinking, for in such dangerous things as war, the errors which proceed from a spirit of benevolence are the worst. Um, war proceeds to extremities, Joshua's uh, writes. And uh, imagining a philosophy of war itself as a principle of moderation, would, he says, would be an absurdity. And then it comes to the part that it seems to me is most interesting for, for, for your audience. So on page 103 of, of my edition of, of Clausewitz. We therefore repeat our proposition that war is an act of violence pushed to its utmost bounds as one side, pushed to its utmost bounds as one side dictates the law, one side dictates the law to the other. In other words, it doesn't come from the outside, it doesn't come from the, from, from, from culture, but it comes from the other side. One side dictates the law to the other side. There arises a sort of reciprocal action, which logically must lead to an extreme. So the, the necessity comes from the internal following of this law of the other, the law of the other individual. This is the first reciprocal action, and the first extreme which we meet. He's going to have uh, two more. I'm going to be very uh, quick about this in a minute. Here's the second one. Here then is another case of reciprocal action. As long as the enemy is not defeated, he may defeat me. Then I will no longer be my own master. He will dictate the law to me as I did to him. So the law comes from the other. It's not an external law, even though it was instigated, it was started by some rational procedure. This is the second reciprocal now, action. Now, now the third reciprocal action. The adversary does the same. Therefore, in a new mutual enhancement, which in pure conception must uh, create a fresh effort towards the extreme. Here's the third case of reciprocal action and the third extreme that we meet. So the, in all three cases that he's talking about, these are our laws of reciprocity. Okay? That's a, that's a different view from any of the views that we have looked at. Uh, what does Gerard do with, with this? He, what he does with it is suggest that this is a way of seeing um, the texts that have not received in his view uh, a profound enough reading from either the Hebrew Bible or from the New Testament, namely the book of Revelation, book, parts of the book of Daniel, parts of book, uh, books of, of Ezekiel, parts of other texts. Uh, there's a whole slew of texts that are sometimes characterized within both Jewish context and, 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 and Christian context as apocalyptic. I mean, I'll refer in a moment to, to the word apocalypse, so I want to say a little bit about that. Uh, it seems to me that what Gerard is saying is that the apocalyptic is prophetic. He's giving a prophetic reading to the apocalyptic. He's not giving a, a, a reading of the apocalyptic that means 
the, the worst is coming and we can do nothing about it, which is one of the ways we commonly think about the notion of the apocalyptic. The prophetic, and I want to give my own definition of the prophetic, which I, which I give when I, when, I, when, I teach, when I teach it. Prophetic is the recognition of the dramas in which human beings are engaged and the naming in advance of the end of those dramas in order that we can choose to go there or not. In other words, the prophetic is not uh, prediction. The, the prophetic is not fortune to a uh, future talk in the sense that, that it, it's going to tell us what will happen. It tells us what will follow should we continue along the path we have been traveling. It's the inevitable end of the drama that is afoot, but it's not necessarily the inevitable end, right? I mean, if, if, if you're in a uh, if you're in a, a room and, and there are a group of people uh, seated on, on one side of the room, a group of people seated on another and a, and a red carpet or some other kind of carpet in the middle and there's a man with a black book uh, and, and there's a woman in white and, and, and um, perhaps she walks down, another man walks down. It wouldn't take a great profit to suggest that we might be in the marriage ritual, the marriage drama. But someone could yell, cut. And we could, it could turn out that we're in fact filming a, a soap opera of some kind. Or someone could yell, fire! And now we're into the run for your life drama. Right? So it doesn't mean that sooner or later someone will necessarily say, do you take this man, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded spouse? That will only happen if the drama gets played out. Within the Hebrew Bible tradition, as Buber uh, makes very clear in his article, um, uh, Dialogue between heaven and earth, and apocalyptic, um, prophetic, and the historical hour. Uh, the prophetic is an if-then structure, and I think we have a lot to, to say. And I, I very much appreciated what Jonah here said about the Book of Jonah, because it seems to me the Book of Jonah is a, is a primary example of, of of the prophetic. Forty days more, and Nineveh will be destroyed. Well, Nineveh is not destroyed, but he's not attacked for the fact that Nineveh is not destroyed. What if, if you continue as you are going? 40 days more and nine will be destroyed. But it doesn't say anything about what will happen. It's, it's not a prediction of what will take place. It's a prediction of what will happen should you continue the drama whose road you are already traveling. The prophetic is a reading of the road one is already traveling according to the Hebrew prophets, as Buber reads it and I would suggest as Levinas reads it. Okay, so I'm gonna back off from that a little bit now. Um, I, I just wanna take a look with you at, at uh, uh, so I, we've talked about this I want to take a little bit, look with you just very quickly at Levin Austin and then we'll, I'll, I'll end my talk. Uh, take a look at page one, which is what I call identity construction. You know, Levin uh, view is that he wants to change uh, the ways we think about subjectivity. That's really at, at, at bottom what he's about. He wants to suggest that the notion that if we have a subjectivity of consciousness before an object of knowledge is in fact a repression, uh, a dislocation, uh, something that's false and not accurate or not authentic to what's going on in human relations. So for example, he, he gives the, uh, the following as a model for, for what a Hegelian uh, round trip uh, attempt at, at founding the self would look like. So we move from the same we can call the structure this, this little agent that, that moves the ego. It moves through something like the sensory. Uh, it has perhaps some enjoyment. And it bumps up against something that we can call the other. The, the, that's not the same. But it's not the same thing, and I want to be very clear about this, as something, as the other other. The other which is what I'm going to call the other individual, the, the autoi at this moment. We bump up against simply an, something we identify as an object, and we return to the same, and that's how we constitute our, our identity. This is what Levinas thinks of as the round trip uh, manner in which we think uh, we think ourselves. We construct ourselves. We, we construct literally the self. He, he calls this Homeric. He, he cites the Odyssey as a, as a primary example. And to, to a large extent, totality and infinity is a working out of the difficulties of this part, this, the, the trip out, so to speak. I don't, I don't know that that has ever been fully articulated. What is the relationship between this book, Totality Infinity, and, and this book, Otherwise Than Being? I, um, so I, I know it's a very hotly contested notion within um, uh, Levinas' studies that these two books are at odds. I would suggest that they're actually not at odds, that actually what Levinas is doing is reversing the trip, that he is first describing in Totality Infinity the relation between the, the same and the other, uh, which would get us back to the same.